Good evening from New York. I'm Alicia Menendez in for Chris Hayes, and it is election night in America. Tonight, there are major primary contests in Nebraska and West Virginia. It is the next big test for Trump-endorsed candidates as the ex-president seeks to tighten his grip on the Republican Party. We all saw what happened last week in Ohio when Trump's candidate, J.D. Vance, surged to an unexpected victory after Trump's endorsement. And when Trump's former aide, Max Miller, won a contested primary to replace Republican Congressman Anthony Gonzalez. Gonzalez was, of course, one of just 10 Republicans who voted to impeach Trump the second time. And Miller won, despite being accused of slapping his ex-girlfriend, former Trump White House official Stephanie Grisham. He denies those allegations. So in many ways, the Republican Party is still the party of Trump. And boy, has he backed quite a candidate for Nebraska's governor. His name is Charles Herbster. He's a conservative businessman who's donated more than a million dollars to Trump's campaigns. He also attended Trump's Stop the Steal rally at the Ellipse on January 6th. You know, the one where he incited the insurrection. And there are the sexual assault allegations from eight women that Herbster groped them, including when he served as a beauty pageant judge. One of the allegations comes from Nebraska Republican State Senator Julie Slama. I was groped at a political event by someone who is not a member of this body and not a current or former office holder. That's Republican State Senator Julie Slama speaking on the floor of the legislature back in February. Thursday, she spoke up more, saying in a statement she was not going to deny the truth that Charles Herbster, a candidate for governor, sexually assaulted her. She told the Nebraska Examiner's Aaron Sanderford it happened at this event in 2019, a Douglas County Republican Party event called Elephant Remembers. That brings in local politicians, donors, and everyday Republicans. Slama, a first-year state senator at the time, confirmed that Herbster reached up her skirt without consent and touched her. An unnamed witness backed up the story to the Nebraska Examiner. The Nebraska Examiner reports another woman alleges, quote, Herbster once cornered her privately and kissed her forcibly. The others allege, quote, Herbster touched them inappropriately when they were saying hello or goodbye to him or when they were posing for a photograph by his side. These allegations date back just five years from 2017 to now. All eight women say they were in their late teens or early 20s at the time of the assault. And the examiner says it has independently corroborated six of the incidents with an outside witness. But Herbster denies the allegations. He has called them libelous fake news. He has filed a defamation suit against the state senator who says he reached up her skirt. And he is even running an attack ad, arguing the accusations a part of a political hit job from his opponent, Jim Pillen. And even after the supposed incident, she kept contacting Herbster. Texts, calls, meetings, even invited Herbster to her destination wedding. Jim Pillen's attack on Herbster built on lies. Perhaps unsurprisingly, Trump has come to Herbster's defense, saying, quote, he is innocent of these despicable charges. Not too long ago, serious allegations like this would have been enough to end a campaign. But those days appear to be over. Allegations of sexual misconduct, not enough to end Trump's career, and it's his party now. And so tonight, a man who was at the Stop the Steal rally, a man accused of sexual assault by multiple women, is on the ballot with Trump's endorsement to be Nebraska's next Republican governor. Jane Klebe is the chair of the Nebraska Democratic Party, and she joins me now. Jane, this is a close race, as I understand it. The Nebraska Examiner has a new analysis of a forecasting model that gives Herbster a 44% chance of winning, Pillen a 42% chance of winning, Lindstrom a 14% chance. What does it say, Jane, about the Nebraska Republican Party that Herbster might still win this nomination? The reality is, in red states, they are absolutely Trump states. And unless the Democratic Party is going to invest in red states, we are not going to be able to compete statewide. And we're going to continue to get the worst of the worst of the Republicans. It is absolutely bonkers that we have somebody who not only has credible sexual assault cases against him, but he is spreading you know, lies about critical race theory, about the stolen election, of, of banning books. And all of the Republicans, even the so-called moderate in the race, wants to ban abortions, not even making exceptions for rape and incest. So as a party, this should be a major wake-up call that we have to invest in red states because we have good candidates. We have good messaging. But when you don't have resources, the Democrats can't win. 